Hello, good people. Welcome to our online devotion. I hope you're blessed and safe from wherever you're watching us from. We just thank the Lord that you're able to join us. Uh, remember to subscribe and to share this video with your friends and family. We just want to praise and worship the name of the Lord and want to acknowledge that Jesus is indeed a friend. So join us as we sing this hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Welcome. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we often forfeit Oh, what needless pain we bear All because we do not carry Everything to God in prayer Have we trials and temptations is the trouble anywhere We should never be discouraged Take it to the Lord in prayer Come, we find a friend so faithful Who will all our sorrows share Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Come, but we the Lord of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a soulless His arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find thy soul is there. Oh Jesus, oh what a friend we have in Jesus. Jesus. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening, saints of God. Here is another evening that the Lord has blessed us with. I would like to share this evening devotion with the word that the good Lord has given me. Let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, King of glory, you come before you with thanksgiving. Father, we want to worship you, to praise you, and to glorify your name because of who you are. You have given us all that we have, breath, you've given us health, and you've given us much more, Lord. We say thank you. Even as we sit at your feet to listen to what you have to say to us this evening, we want to invite the Holy Spirit to come and guide us. For we pray and believe in Jesus' name. 
Amen. This evening, I would like us to talk about children of God. The topic tonight is children of God. Who are the children of God? Apostle John is probably the last living apostle when he wrote this book. He lived almost to the end of the first century. He was writing to people who are already Christians, outlining how that faith should affect a person's life. He wrote a lot about love, that is how Christians should live and love one another. He has taught us how to be the children of God. If you read from 1 John 3 and verse 1. The book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1 which says, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Apostle John has put an exclamation mark when he said, and that is what we are. He considers all Christians to be children of God. When I look at this phrase, children of God, I ask myself, the relationship between a child and a parent, let's say a child and a father. We are told that we are supposed to have the kind of confidence that a child has with its father. At times I talk to little kids in my estate and when I talk to them, they tell me so many stories about their fathers. They have a lot of faith in their fathers. They'll tell you their father is the greatest. They'll tell you their father is the richest. Their father is the strongest. And some will say, you cannot even fight my dad. That is the kind of confidence children have with their fathers. Do we have that kind of confidence in our father as Christians? I would like us to look at three propositions. Children of God must know him. Do we know God? Another point I would like to Look at is we know when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. That's another point you look at. And the last point will be sin is the only thing that will prevent us from becoming the children of God. Now, children of God must know him. Do we know God? Considering Bible is deemed as the word of God, we would say to better know God is the entire purpose of the scripture. The main purpose of reading our Bibles is to know God. When you read your Bible, do you get to know God? When you read your Bible, what message do you get does it help you to know God more than you did before? We establish a personal relationship with the holiness of God. If we read John 17, 3, this time not first John, but John. John 17, 3, and the book says, this eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ 
whom you have sent. How do we get to know God? If we get to know God, there is a reward. Knowing God is doing his will. Knowing God is listening to him. To know God is to recognize his voice. We, to recognize his voice, be well acquainted with his ways, be able to discern his sovereign will, and be fully assured of his perfect character. Are we acquainted to his ways? What are God's ways? Do we know what God wants us to be? Do we walk his ways? Do we recognize him as sovereign? Do we know his will? When we know God, we will know his character. That is the only time we can confidently say, in quote, when he appears, we shall know him, for we shall see him as he is. When we know God, we can say in confidence that when Christ will appear, we will know him, knowing him. How will you know Christ? The Bible tells us we will see the marks in his hands and all Christians know what he went through. We'll know him. When we see him, we'll know him. We'll not mistake him. And we shall see him as he is. If you are not a believer, you'll never see Christ. But if you're a true believer and you do the will of God, we will see him as he is. To know God is to recognize his voice, be well acquainted with his ways, be able to discern his sovereign way, and fully assured of his perfect character, like I said. God is all-knowing. There are attributes of God. When we want to know God, we have to know him by his character and his attributes. We are told God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. God is all-powerful, omnipotent. God is present everywhere, omnipresent. He's ever-present. Whether we are seeing him or not, he is present. He's here with us. He's with the people who are very far from this country. He's all over. Is omnipresent. God is eternal. This is another attribute of God. He does not have beginning, He does not have an end. He is eternal. With all these and many other attributes, we can, we can understand how sovereign God is, how powerful God is. And if he's our father, and with all these attributes, we can confidently say we are children of God. But if we don't know him, we don't know his attributes, we don't believe in him, then we cannot claim to know God. Many people will ask, if God has got all these attributes. Why does he allow us suffer? Why there's so much suffering, especially now, during this time of corona pandemic? Why does he allow suffering? He's so powerful. We have just said he's all powerful and all knowing. Why did he allow coronavirus to come 
and affect us this much. The Bible tells us his ways are not our ways. The way he does things is not the way we do or we would love to do. He's suffering. We accept his ways for he knows why. For there is a time to enjoy and there is a time even to cry. Brethren, there is hope in this powerful God who is our father. If we are his children, he knows why and he's going to remove this period of suffering. Jesus said, we will suffer many things while we are still in this world. That is Philippians 1.29. For to you, it has been granted for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him, but to suffer for his sake. Sometimes we can't understand why suffer. But Jesus knows it is for a while. Where we are going, there will be no suffering. We may suffer in this world because he said suffering is sure in this world. But where he has gone to prepare for us, there will be no suffering. And suffering is for a time. Brethren, whether we are going through good or tough times, God will remain God. Children of God also go through some trying seasons, but he enables us to conquer all. Sin is the only thing that will prevent us from being the kind of children that God wants us to be. If you read John 1 and verse 12, it says, But to all who did receive him, who believed his name, he gave them the right to become the children of God. Do we believe in him? He has told us very clearly, if you believe in him, we have the right to become the children of God. Tonight, let's reflect on the things that will make us children of God. If we remove sin, we will be counted as children of God and we will lead a good life. In conclusion, if we read the word of God, we will get acquainted with his ways. Let's read our Bible daily. Let's try to understand his ways. Then we shall have done the will of our Father. When we read the book, when we read the Bible, we shall have done the will of our Father. Because Jesus Christ is telling us, if we do his Father's will, we'll be counted as children of God. If we get to know the character and the attribute of God, attributes of God, then we shall have faith in whatever situation that we may find ourselves in. Because God is everywhere. Whether we are going through good times, bad times, he's with us. He has said he'll never leave us, neither forsake us. Because we are his children. Children of God. What a privilege to be hearers with Christ Jesus. Because he says, those who believe and do the will of my Father, they will inherit the kingdom of God. If we believe in Jesus Christ, his begotten Son, and do his Father's will, then we shall inherit the eternal kingdom with him. Praise be to God. Let's finish with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, King of glory, we want to thank you for what you have taught us this evening. Lord, we have heard 
all the requirements so that we can be counted as children of God. You want us to believe in your son, Jesus Christ, and we shall be here as with him. And this is our prayer tonight. We want to be called by your name because your name is a great name. Father, we thank you and we worship you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and trust. Amen. Yesu Rafiki Yesu ni mwanga wangu Yesu mkombozi anajua kunitosheleza Pasipo na njia utengeneza nikilemewa yeye hunishika Yesu Rafiki Yesu Rafiki Tumaini langu ni wewe Imani yangu na iweka kwako Kwenye majaribu na kwenye bonde la mauti yunami Yesu ndiye rafiki Tumaini langu ni uwe Imani yangu na iweka kwako Majaribu Na kwenye bonde La mauti Yunami Yesu ndiye Rafiki Yesu Rafiki Yesu ni mwanga wangu Yesu mkombozi Anajua kunitosheleza Pasipo na njia utengeneza Nikilemewa yeye hunishika Yesu Rafiki Yesu Rafiki Amini buwana moyo wangu Siwe na hofu na u Si fadha ike Amea hidi Atani wacha kamwe huyu yesu we Yee ndiye rafiki Amini buwana mo Ameahidi Hata ni wacha kamwe huyu Yesu we Yee ndiye Rafiki Yesu Rafiki Yesu ni mwanga wangu Yesu mkombo Anajua kunitosheleza Pasipo na njia utengeneza Nikilemewa yeye unishika Yesu Rafiki Yesu Rafiki Rafiki Yukari
Nikilemewa 